Over the past year and a half, I've spent a ton of time listening to anime soundtracks and researching the composers, partially so I could make analysis videos, but mainly because I genuinely enjoy learning more about the skilled musical individuals who often go unnoticed in this industry. If you've been following my content, you'll know that I've highlighted quite a handful of composers, and I've always thought to myself, man, wouldn't it be crazy if all of my favorite anime composers came together to form some kind of supergroup? Now, music labels and companies aren't exactly something I would expect many people to get excited about since you'd need to be a crazy composition otaku to get hyped about something like this. Before I heard about Imagine, I already knew of a few other composer labels like Monaka and Elements Garden who had already blown me away with their lineup of big names and some of my favorite anime soundtracks. But it wasn't until I was researching Princess Connect's soundtrack that I saw one of my favorite composers, Tanaka Kohei, being affiliated with a company. A few clicks later, and I was full-on fanboying over a team unlike any I could have possibly, well, imagined. <laughs> Since I already mentioned him, let's start off with Tanaka Kohei, the founder and leader of Imagine. Most famously known as one of the lead composers on One Piece, I didn't find out about Tanaka until I watched Hyoka back in 2014. I had already developed a sense of some of my favorite composers by that point, but Tanaka's music was on a level of its own, capturing a sense of beauty and musical flow unlike what I had heard in so many other series. And to my great annoyance, finding a way to properly listen to Hyoka's OST was no easy feat given how it was split up across 11 different discs that were released with the Blu-rays, but I knew that this was a soundtrack that would be worth the trouble. Not long after, I was browsing through my Facebook timeline and came across a random video about beautiful music in video games. By that point, I was halfway through my music degree and wanted to know everything I could about music in my hopeful field of work, so I clicked on it and heard this. Again, I had already developed a sense of my favorite composers, games even more so than anime at the time, but I had never been so blown away by a piece of music for a series I had never even played before. My only exposure to Gravity Rush prior to hearing this piece was seeing Cat as a DLC character in PlayStation All-Stars, but outside of that, I knew nothing about the game. After clicking through a bit of the OST on YouTube, I was completely in love and got a copy of the soundtrack without even playing the game, only to see a familiar name listed as the composer, Tanaka Kohei. And ever since then, I've never been anything less than blown away by Tanaka's soundtracks. I'd be lying if I said I'd heard many, but I always know that I'm in for a treat when I see his name listed, and he, alongside Oshima Michiru and Yamada Yutaka, is one of the very few composers that can get me to watch a show purely based off of his name alone. But let's go back to the piece currently playing, given that it was the first piece of music that ever convinced me to get a soundtrack while knowing absolutely nothing about where it came from. Now, if you're watching this channel, chances are you probably already watch or have at least heard of 8-Bit Music Theory, and you might notice that he already talked about this specific piece of music in this video here, a video requested by none other than yours truly. If you haven't already, I highly recommend going and watching it because anything that I could say about this piece has probably already been said better and more eloquently in his video. Honestly, what drew me into the piece so much was that the more I listened to it over time, the more complex it revealed itself to be. What was initially just a beautiful orchestral piece of background music revealed itself to be a smooth ride of modal shifts and transitions, changing course from the expected but never throwing the listener out of sync with the flow of the music. Each successive measure crosses into varying levels of unexpected musical territory, yet it all stays grounded in the simplicity of the basic call and response pattern established in the early melodic lines. Where this melodic line gets passed around different instruments, the actual musical content keeps it sounding smooth and flowing, allowing the listener to follow along even when it's seemingly bouncing all over the place. And this kind of musical interplay and orchestral mastery is present in nearly every piece that Tanaka composes, from his beautiful flowing tracks like this one to his more rock or jazz-inspired pieces. Maybe I'll cover him in his own dedicated video in the future so that I can go more in detail about his incredible writing, but for now I'll leave it at that so that we can get to some of the others in Imagine.
I can't highlight every composer in Imagine because each person really deserves their own full video essay and there are so many of them that even just squeezing in a handful of my favorites is going to make this video long enough as it is. With that in mind, Inai Keiji is one of the heavy hitters for the group that needs to be mentioned. Inai is probably best known for his work on Danmachi, having written all of the music for the series thus far, including the incredible theme playing right now. Like Tanaka, Inai has an innate sense of how to bring out an orchestra to its fullest effect swelling and billowing with his sweeping melodies that carry you across the worlds they create. While I haven't personally heard any of his music outside of fantasy settings, I've never really craved anything different from him since he always has such a distinct feeling for each of the sonic worlds he creates. Much of Dan Machi's music has a lighter sort of sound, with even this track building out of some relatively high strings and tin whistles to highlight the journey that the underdog protagonist Bell must go through to become stronger. We're then hit with a surge of horns that, despite coming in fairly suddenly sound like a natural gradual build due to the implementation of each instrument group matching the pace of Bell's sudden and explosive growth. And this brilliant writing can be heard across all of his series, from the goofier sounds of Outbreak Company to the darker, edgier vibes of Demon King Academy. In fact, one of his standout tracks for me comes from Outbreak Company, the first series I'd ever heard his music in, and it isn't naturally what you'd expect me to like. This obviously isn't some beautiful orchestral piece or thought-provoking track tied deeply to anything in the series, it's just a comedic track for shits and giggles. And yet, as the piece continues on, the rhythms start growing more and more complex, showing that even for his most ridiculous pieces, Inai has a way of making the music he writes enjoyable for both trained and untrained ears. And while rhythm and timing aren't the only things that Inai is great at, he certainly knows how to showcase his mastery over them in order to really bring out the emotions he wants you to feel such as in this piece, also from Outbreak Company. The use of rubato in the beginning really has the pianist digging into those emotional holds, speeding up ever so slightly during the repetitions while keeping the pace slow for the builds in and out of those opening melodies. The piano itself, recorded with a lot of reverb and a filter on the higher frequencies, gives the sound quality a warm, reflective feel, reminiscent of the promise that the title surely refers to. This mastery of musical styles and timing is what allows Inai, Tanaka, and really all of the members of Imagine to fully capture what it is they want to convey with the music, and regardless of the quality of the projects they write for, the soundtracks always do exactly what they should. Matsuo Hayato needs no real introduction to those who have been following my channel, and as the protege and likely successor of the late Dragon Quest composer Sugiyama Koichi, I think it goes without saying that he's a force to be reckoned with. At the very least, he's already a step up from his mentor for not being a piece of shit human being. Fans of Helsing may argue that the music for the original was better than Ultimates, and I can't really say anything since I haven't seen either show, but from what little I've heard of Ultimates soundtrack, it'd be a disservice to call the music bad, even if the originals was more fitting or just cooler in general. Again, like all the composers in Imagine, Matsuo is a master of the orchestra, able to build entire worlds and atmospheres out of the simplest of means. If we take the concept of Helsing on its own, the idea of intense orchestral music and hellish choirs is the most immediately easy to imagine, something that Matsuo capitalized on for his interpretation of the soundtrack. And this kind of musical intensity also transfers over to the music he wrote for the first part of JoJo back before stands had been introduced and the series was about harnessing the power of the sun to fight vampires. Again, this makes a lot of sense given the demonic relation both this part of Jojo and Helsing have to vampires and demons. But where I still find that Matsuo's music shines the brightest is in his work on The World God Only Knows, yet another series about demons and holy spirits, though not in quite the same way Jojo Part 1 and Helsing are. The 
range of silly, serious, electronic, acoustic, traditional, and modern tracks is absolutely unreal, and alongside all of that is his showcasing of how to masterfully evolve simple character themes to both follow along with those characters' growth as well as the secondary characters that relate to those same themes. I've already done a three-part video essay on this, so I won't go too in detail about it here, but it still baffles me that he was able to take his original themes and advance them in such unexpected ways. Like I mentioned in my video essays, Matsuo had to write themes for each of the show's characters, a rather difficult feat given that by nature of what the world God Only Knows is about, this meant he had to write about five new themes each season. Not only that, each of these themes needed variations to reflect different aspects of the characters in question, and likely unbeknownst to him when he first signed on to the project, he would eventually have to develop many of these themes into fully orchestral pieces for the final season. Making a good character theme is already difficult enough as it is, especially when one has to consider all the different aspects of the character they are writing for, but this goes even more so when, somewhat suddenly, the composer is asked to develop a pre-existing theme into something much more than it was possibly intended to be. As a quick example, it really speaks to Matsuo's level of skill and professionalism when you can hear the goddess versions of character themes like Ayumi's and Shiori's, characters who appeared in the first season and who Matsuo probably had no idea he would have to be developing so much down the line. With all of these huge composers in the group, that leaves some freakishly big shoes to fill for any new blood that may hope to join the ranks of Imagine, and let me tell you, the level of skill doesn't drop with any of the group's younger composers. If anything, it actually increases, and there's no better example than who I'd consider to be the Spider-Man of this group of Avengers, Higashi Oji Kenta. Now, as a younger and newer composer to the industry, Higashi Oji understandably doesn't have a huge list of credits under his belt, yet in spite of that, the works that I've heard from him have been nothing short of incredible, and every time I've heard a mind-blowingly amazing piece of music and seen his name next to it, my only thought has been, ah, Sasuga Higashi Oji. I'm not even joking either, this man has written almost every kind of music you can think of and done it so well that I'm ashamed to admit that he and I are the same age, given just how much more skilled he is than I am in pretty much every way. It's no exaggeration to say that Higashi Oji is a master of conveying his musical ideas and turning his imagination into actual work. Works. Artists and creators in every field strive to be able to properly convey what they see or hear in their heads, but very few have the ability to do so to the precise degree that Higashi Oji seems to. For example, <laughs> This track alone deserves an entire analysis video, and it shouldn't be particularly difficult to understand why. Capturing a sense of what I can only describe as structured chaos is one of the most difficult but also cathartic things that a composer can accomplish, as the paradoxical nature of such a task is obviously one that leaves a lot to be explored. How does one create a piece of music that feels chaotic while still keeping enough structure so that the listener has a sense of what's going on? For this track in particular, Higashi Oji chose metric modulations, complex rhythms, short atonal interjections, and quick section transitions, keeping all of this chaos together with a steady pulse and an overarching key to ground piece. Whether or not you know what this track is for, you immediately get a sense of the music's character as something imposing and driven by madness. This is just one of the many chaotic boss battle themes that Higashi Oji has written, another of which I talked about briefly in another video. The level of skill it requires not only to think of many of these musical ideas, but then to also have them properly conveyed onto paper so that the musicians can play them back is insane, and having analyzed and even written a handful of tracks that I thought were pretty detailed, I can't even imagine where you would begin with something like this. And this is only a handful of the composers I felt I had time to talk about, but this is only a tiny fraction of the people and music that make up this incredible music team. I didn't even get to others like Otani Cole, who composed the music for Shadow of the Colossus. Nishiki Asunori from Octopath Traveler. or even Miyazaki Shinji, who's been writing the music for the Pokemon anime and movies since basically forever.
Every single one of these composers in this group has something to offer and a track record to show for it, even if their list of credits isn't long. And the best part is that if you want to get a taste of how each one of these composers sounds without searching around for full soundtracks by each of them, you're in luck. <laughs> I've made a video on it before, but if Imagine are the Avengers of anime music, then Princess Connect Redive is their Infinity War, a project where all of these massive talents have teamed up to put together an absolutely spectacular soundtrack, the likes of which I still think goes unrivaled to this day. Whether it's background music from the game, one of the many, many character songs, or even the music from the anime adaptation, Princess Connect has no shortage of incredible music both compositionally and production-wise. Honestly, what most would probably brush off as just another waifu gacha game with minimal gameplay has one of the most high quality soundtracks I've ever heard for any kind of medium. And with the English version having been out for about a year at the time of this video's recording, I'm hoping that more and more people will come to appreciate that, anime gimmicks and tropes aside, the game actually has a pretty good story and amazing production quality. And if we're talking music, it doesn't even stop at the members of Imagine, as Psy Games' own in-house team of composers like Honda Akihiro and other third party composers like Ron, who seems to compose every other good Annie song these days, are also regular contributors. I'd love to do another video on Princess Connect's music, and with the fourth soundtrack having recently just come out, I'll definitely have a lot more to talk about if I ever get around to making a video about it. But before I get ahead of myself gushing about Princess Connect's music for the second time on my channel, let me know what you guys think of Imagine and what other composer supergroups you're into. I've really wanted to do this video for a long time because more than just sharing awesome music with you guys, I've been wanting to gush about Imagine ever since I discovered them. Every single one of these composers deserves a full video of their own, and I've even talked about some of them in my previous videos already. So if you have a favorite composer or a group of composers that you'd like me to talk about, let me know down in the comments below, and don't forget to like the video and subscribe to my channel. And if you want access to all of the transcriptions I've made for any of my music analysis videos, make sure to go and support me over on Patreon. Thanks as always for watching, and I will see you in the next one.